Welcome dear Adivid viewers. In this session, we will be summarizing the chapter PDD classification of elements. Well, we can understand the same just like a story. Okay, so it mainly deals with how different scientists of different ages try to classify different elements in different fashion. Okay, so our entire universe it is made up of 119 elements. So what do you think? These 119 elements are they completely random? No. Okay. you'll find that yes they have got some similar properties and it is based on this similarity in properties only that scientists they were able to classify or say arrange them okay in different ways so let us now go through the different atoms made by different scientists in order to arrange these elements so the first atom to arrange the elements it was made by Jabarino. his approach was based on triads okay triads what does that mean a set of three elements and these three elements must have got similar properties so Doberino found that when three elements are arranged in order of the increasing atomic mass then the atomic mass of the central atom was found to be roughly equal to the average of the atomic mass of the other two elements okay however there were some achievements and limitations as well achievement was that he was able to find okay that atomic masses they are not completely random rather they have got some sort of relation also he was able to show that properties of elements it is related to what it is related to atomic mass okay so the limitation was that he was able to find out only three such triads you see these are the three triads out of the 56 elements which were known during his time okay so the next good attempt to arrange the elements or say to classify the elements it was done by Newlands. so he found that when the elements are arranged in order of the increase in at atomic masses then the eighth element was found to have properties similar to that of the first element okay so this is nothing but the Newlands law of octaves so the achievement was elements having atomic number up to 20 that is still calcium okay they were found to follow this trend so in this table you can see the different elements which follow the Newlands law of octaves okay so the limitation was that all the elements that were found during his time they did not follow this trend also Newland he considered that no new elements would be discovered however his consideration was proven wrong when later on new elements were getting discovered among the earlier scientists, the best attempt to arrange the elements was done by Mendeleev. He is also known as the father of the modern periodic table. So what he did? While arranging the different elements, he took into account their physical and chemical properties. Okay? He also gave a periodic law which states that the properties of the elements are the periodic functions of their atomic masses. So based on this law, what he did? He arranged the different elements okay, in a table and that table is known as what? Mendeleev's periodic table. So now let us go through the achievements of this table. Okay? So in his table, he predicted that yes, there are some chances of you know new elements being getting discovered in the future. So that's the reason what he did. He left some of the places or say the positions in the table vacant. Also, he predicted the properties of those undiscovered elements. Later on, when those undiscovered elements were discovered, his predictions were found to be correct. Also, instead of having higher atomic mass, what he did? He placed cobalt before nickel based on some properties. Well, later on, okay, when new periodic law came into being, so this position of cobalt before nickel was also found to be correct. Now the limitations of this table. So due to similarity of hydrogen, okay, with the elements of group 1 that is the alkali metals and also with the elements of group 17 that is the halogen atoms, the position okay, of hydrogen in the Mendeleev periodic table could not be fixed. Also you see in Mendeleev periodic table isotopes could not be included because isotopes of an atom they have different atomic mass but similar properties. So since they have similar properties so they should be placed together but since they have different atomic masses so they should have different positions is not it so these two properties different atomic mass and similar properties okay they contradict each other and that's the reason isotopes okay they could not be included in the Mendeleev's periodic table so came the modern periodic table so the periodic table that we currently use is known as the modern periodic table it was the result of the change in the periodic law from atomic mass to atomic number 
okay by henry mosley in the year 1913 so this new periodic law it is known as the modern periodic law and it states that the properties of the elements are the periodic functions of the atomic numbers so the old periodic law okay there the properties they were based on what they were periodic functions of the atomic masses but the new that is the modern periodic law here the properties okay they are periodic functions of what atomic numbers that means what now we are emphasizing on atomic numbers rather than on atomic mass that means what elements they are arranged emphasizing more on atomic numbers and not on atomic mass so now let us see what are the advantages of atomic numbers over atomic mass so you see isotopes of an element they could be given the same position why because isotopes they have same atomic number but different atomic masses and since we are arranging the elements how emphasizing more on the atomic numbers and since the isotopes of an atom they have the same atomic number so they can be given the same position in the modern periodic table also dispute regarding the position of placement you know cobalt before nickel was also solved you see atomic number of cobalt it is less than atomic number of nickel but the atomic mass of cobalt it is greater than atomic mass of nickel but now we are arranging in terms of what atomic number and since the atomic number of cobalt is less than the atomic number of nickel so position of cobalt before nickel was found to be correct okay that was exactly how mendeleev placed okay cobalt before nickel in the mendeleev's periodic table now let us go through the different trends which are followed in the modern periodic table so let us start first of all with valency okay so the valency it represents the combining ability of an atom okay it is the ability of an atom to gain or lose electrons in order to achieve the stable electronic configuration similar to that of a noble gas now what is the trend followed by it in the table so in the group all the elements they have the same valency however in a period if we move from left to right it is found that the valency increases till group 14 and after that it starts decreasing okay so next is the atomic size so the atomic size it is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell that is the valence shell now what is the trend followed by it you see in a group as we move from top to bottom what will happen newer shells are introduced okay and when newer shells are introduced what will happen the distance okay from the center of the nucleus to the valence shell it will increase that means what atomic radius is increasing which implies that atomic size is increasing that means in a group when we move from top to bottom atomic size will increase now in a period when we move from left to right okay shells are not added only new electrons are added is not it so what will happen effective nuclear charge will increase okay effective nuclear charge which is felt by the valence cell electrons so what will happen attraction will increase and hence the atomic size will decrease why because the atoms okay they will become compact in size compact means what radius is small that means when we move in a period from left to right atomic size decreases however in a group atomic size increases as we move from top to bottom okay so the next is the metallic and non metallic properties so let us start with the metallic properties so metals in course of bond formation metals they have the tendency to lose electrons and this tendency to lose electrons is known as electropositivity so the easy the more easily a metal can lose electrons the more metallic property it exhibits that means that particular element which can easily lose electrons it is more metallic in nature okay so in a group as we move from top to bottom you see newer shells are being introduced as a result of which what will happen the effective nuclear charge on the valence shell electrons it will decrease as we move down the group from top to bottom so since attraction will be less why because effective nuclear charge has decreased that means what those elements can easily lose those valence electrons and when they can easily lose electrons that means what they are more metallic in nature is not it so in a group as we move from top to bottom effective nuclear charge decreases so what happens metallic character increases however in a period when we move from left to right 
effective nuclear charge increases that means what the valence shell electrons are more tightly packed they are more tightly attracted and hence such elements they are not able they cannot easily lose such valence electrons and that's the reason why okay as we move from left to right in a period you see the metallic character it will decrease so non metals now we will study about the non metals and what is the trend followed by them in the periodic table so non metals in course of bond formation what they do they gain electrons so this tendency of the non metals to gain electrons in course of bond formation it is known as what electro negativity so the more easily okay an element can gain an electron the more non metallic character the more non metallic property is exhibited by the c so non metals they are completely opposite to that of metals and hence the trend which they follow in the modern periodic table is also completely opposite to that of the metals so you see for non metals okay when we move along a group from top to bottom non metallic character okay it decreases however in a period okay when we move from left to right the non metallic character is increases which is completely opposite to that which is followed by the metal so that's all from this chapter periodic classification of elements hope you understood the concepts of this chapter clearly okay because the concepts of this chapter is very useful in understanding the basic concepts of chemistry as a whole okay so in the upcoming session we will be discussing some important questions related to this chapter well then thank you